Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be breaking down 7.15 quests. I have already done full breakdown videos for the first four quests in 7.1. You can find them in my Act uh, 7 playlist. But uh, yeah, today uh, we're going to be jumping in 7.15 and I'm going to be going through every single lane. Mentioning most notable encounters, best possible options for each lane and also each of the bosses so first we need to start here on the far left side with a lane that's actually somewhat a bit tricky and confusing and could be arguably one of the trickier lanes in this entire chapter which is spite tranquility and counter-strike the node combination of spite and tranquility is quite odd one because Tranquility resets both uh, the buffs and debuffs on each champion and their power every 20 seconds. However, Spite obviously can potentially give your opponents significant increase in power gain. And then when you look at the opponents with Guardian, with Magic, and where can we jump further? It's a bit confusing toss up here. Then we can jump to Captain America Infinity War, Omega Red and Dormammu. So there are several champions that in themselves kind of need to be countered. But the main takeaway from these fights here with the Spite and Tranquility is that both of these nodes to a large degree kind of cancel each other out. And uh, in order to be able to play this lane comfortably, you kind of want to push the limits of how well you can time Tranquility. Because quite often the best course here will be even to let the opponents to get to that special 3 but activate like your special 2 as the tranquility timer is about to expire. So you don't get as much of a power loss and opponents lose 3 full bars of power and you can go back on offensive. So the way to do that uh, is obviously to either completely ignore the spite and let's say bring in ghost and just eat the level threes or bring in champions who can tank the level three should the opponents happen to get there or bring in champions who don't have like many natural buffs but still you do need to focus on the fact that tranquility will remove those three bars of power so at large the main key on this lane is to kind of be offensive Obviously, you still have your default spite counters that you can bring in for plethora of fights. Like, for instance, for this magic fight, Archangel did an absolutely amazingly. Because neurotoxins don't get shrugged off because they are passives. And whenever <laughs> he loses some power, it's basically irrelevant. So Archangel, Quake, obviously Ghost, as I mentioned, with level 3 tanking. But other than that, pretty much any champions that counter the defenders themselves will be pretty much viable to be used so long as you don't rely on your special attacks too much if you don't have extra power gain. That is one of the key factors and I find it worth mentioning because most of the 2020 champions kind of rely on level 2s significantly whilst having buffs active and whilst not having uh, access to excess power gain. And in this case it's very very important. Because if you do not have access to excess power gain, and if you do trigger that spite with your like regular rotations, then it's going to be tricky for you to get to that level 2 in time, plus bait out opponent's level 2, so on and so forth. Additionally, the last way how you can approach this obviously is power control, but don't forget that your power is still going to get reset every 20 seconds. So if you're trying to control opponent's power while simultaneously you're going to lose ability to shoot off your own special attacks and tranquility also removes all the debuffs. So all of the champions that do power control well typically might not function here too great. But uh, again, the main thing here is just to focus on countering the opponent so you can bring in champions like Captain America Infinity War for instance relatively easily and you can just kind of like slow poke, parry heavy your way to the victory as well. And uh, it's time we move on to the next lane, which is Energy Adoption Fire with Shake It Off, Poison and Bleed Vulnerability. And I must say, Nick Fury absolutely blitzed through this lane now. Shake Off basically gives all skill champions ability to deal with this lane, which is skill attackers purify one debuff whenever they dash backwards, the number of debuffs purified increased by one for every subsequent dash performed in a row. So only thing you have to do 
is dash back. Now that still leaves you with energy adduction fire, which obviously will still continuously keep placing debuffs on you. But if you read the entire node, if the opponent is inflicted with a bleed debuff, that's it. You don't get incinerated anymore. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that so long as you bring in skilled character who is able to bleed the opponent, not only you will gain 200% damage increase on those bleed buffs, you'll also, also easily be able to shrug off that poison and you're not going to have to worry about incinerate. Now, there would be some other great options for this lane, but because of poison and uh, lack of immunity to, let's say, Sunspot and Human Torch and some other champions, there are far fewer in between great options. You can still obviously bring in Ghost, you can still bring in Red Hulk, they're going to do fantastic, but your tried and trusted Gwenpool, even at rank 4, or obviously Nick Fury, or literally any skill champion with decent access to bleed will do amazingly, and this will be very, very fun lane, and you're going to blitz through all of it without much hassle. Right, so let's go to the next one, third one. Terminal Velocity Dulled Mighty Charge and Foresight. This is a bit tricky as well, but Foresight obviously is super helpful mode that lets you gain 200% attack increase if you're comfortable intercepting. And Dulled will pretty much shut off your crits if you have buffs active or debuffs an opponent. In addition to that, Kabam has been extremely gentle with us in Act 7, and I'm sure if this would be Act 6, we would have Mighty Charge 3 which gives opponents significant attack increase and makes them unstoppable. But Mighty, Mighty Charge 1 just lets them shrug off debuffs and make them immune to debuffs so you can't really parry them if they dash in. Reparry skill is super helpful here, but all it does, it kind of like lets them play around debuff heavy champions. Oh, terminal Velocity in itself is effectively power version of Spiked Armor. Whenever you crit, opponents gain a significant increase in their power rate to a point where it's very, very hard to deal in the fight. Now, the easiest, most straightforward option for this entire lane is to bring in one of the champions that do, does not crit. So we have Guardian, we have Guillotine 2099, we have Crossbones, and then you have champions who you can also use like Quake. Now, Additional approach that you can take to this lane is, so long as you bring in a buff-heavy champion, uh, I don't know, bring in Venom, well, Venom is quite a bad example because you want to crit with Venom, but bring in any champion that has access to several buffs, and uh, that will, in exchange, pretty much completely shut down your crits in its entirety. So bringing in, I don't know, Silver Surfer, or Magneto, because Magneto doesn't rely on critical hits at all whatsoever, or basically, yeah, <laughs> most of the Cosmic Champions bring in Venom the Duck for all I care, and you will never crit, but your damage is still gonna get increased if you are not afraid to intercept. So again, yeah, avoid critting either by having champions who have a lot of buffs, debuff road is a bit trickier because of Mighty Charge, or champions who don't crit. And uh, that is pretty much it. Other than that, there's not too much to this lane. Let's move on to life cycle. And life cycle has technical suppression. So basically tech champions, whenever they activate a special attack, they have a chance to heal, block the opponent, thus shutting down the heal from life cycle towards the end. And if they are already heal blocked, you're simply gonna get uh, a few debuff. Now, Hurt Locker, we all know, and Indomitable, it's fair enough. Now, this entire lane pretty much has Warlock's name written on it because he just destroys the vast majority of the fights here. And his degeneration damage, which he will activate whenever Life Cycle tries to trigger, is a perfect way how to deliver those final HP of damage. So whenever your opponent's low on health, just drop a level 2, you're going to disable Life Cycle, and the degen's going to finish the job off. Other than that, uh, you do need to look at the best life cycle counters. That would be for uh, instance Void. Void will have absolutely no problems dealing with this lane as well, because you deal damage over time, but it's an ability damage, so life cycle doesn't prevent it. And then once you do take the opponent down, it will be very easy to finish them off. 
then you can take a look at uh, Mr. Fantastic with full Fantastic Four Synergy team as well. And using uh, Human Torch on Gnome Flames is going to be very simple for Guillotine. But in general, yeah, you can either go the tech route, use the heal blocks provided there, or bring your own <laughs> heal blocks or damage delivery options, basically, in other ways. Archangel, for instance, his neurotoxins can work fantastic, and he can be utilized here as well. And the third route that is also quite commonly used to fight against life cycle is uh, to manage your power correctly, because here's nothing that actually prevents you from knocking down the opponents in regular fighting scenarios. Uh, so your tactic should be like parry heavy and drop a level 3. If you do not have any great counters for this node combination in particular, the most common and easy way how to finish off fights when opponents have life cycle active is, yeah, parry them, knock them down with a heavy attack, and as soon as shield is disabled, throw a level 3 or an unblockable special attack, basically. Um, yeah, we're going to deal with the bosses uh, a bit later on. Uh, but first we're going to take a look at this Do Not Go Gentle, Foresight and Oscillate lane. So again, Foresight does serve as a very, very significant attack increase. And then you have Oscillate, which is a node that I hate, but we can see quite frequently used. Effectively, it makes champions extremely aggressive in their Fury phase and gives them a lot more damage. And when they go in, ar in armor phase, every champion is basically Mordo when he has power gain active. They're going to hardly ever try to strike you and going to be extremely unwilling to throw a special attack. At the same time, in this node combination, it kind of helps you because you know it's going to be very easy to get your intercept when Oscillate is in, in the Fury phase because they're going to always try to dash back in at you. And when in their armor phase, just don't bother. You can go get them to the corner and drop the heavy attacks to get rid of do not go gentle charges. Now, we can also talk about uh, like the best counters to do not go gentle because it is a very intrusive node that uh, made 625 quest, I believe, an absolute nightmare. And uh, obviously, ghost, again, <laughs> ghost pops up quite often in these. One of the best counters for do not go gentle because whenever you're phasing and countering the opponent, provided that you do it immediately after their first hit and they had had a chance to dash back in, that counts as an intercept for whatever reason. And that will not only remove two, two of these do not go gentle charges, it will also trigger the foresight and give you a significant damage increase. So Ghost is absolutely fantastic for this lane, but so are many other champions. Additional help for people who are not comfortable intercepting all day long, even with the help of Oscillate node in this case, would be champions who have single hit heavy attacks, such as Warlock for instance, or I don't know, Luke Cage, or basically whoever you like to use. If your champions only have one or two hit heavy attacks, then it's very easy to manage do not go gentle charges exclusively using heavy attacks. So you can let opponent build up to three charges, drop three, four heavy attacks in a row, and you're going to have a clean slate, and you will not be forced to intercept. But, again, in this node combination, intercept is something you want to do, thanks to Foresight. So, use Oscillate node to time your intercepts perfectly. Uh, that would be my best advice. Other than that, there is man thing that you need to bring in counter for, quite obviously, because he's going to be inflicting poisons on you. The rest of the fights are fairly standard without any exceptional defenders, really. So if you're not using Ghost, you can definitely use any other champion pretty much in-game. Just use your wits and knowledge. And it's kind of like a theme of Act 7 in general, where most of the fights are very, very open, where vast majority of the champions can do well. It's more about you as a player. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I do like the Act 7 as a content in general. Now we have the last lane, and the last lane is just the cheese paradise. So you have unlimited power, which basically gives opponents fury buffs every 10 seconds for every debuff they have had inflicted upon them since the fight has started. They end up getting a ton of furies. You have Mystic Ward, which means uh, your nullify abilities have 95% chance to fail. However, keep in mind that there are a ton of Fate Seal-like abilities, or staggers, for instance, who still have 100% effectiveness associated with them. 
most importantly, you have this Mystic Curse. Whenever a Mystic attacker activates special attacks, they poison the defender, dealing 100% of their attack rating, direct damage over 7 seconds, and the potency increases for every buff. And you also have Buffet. And uh, this is uh, Cheese Mageddon for Ronan. Uh, if any one of you remember when Captain America Final Boss in 6.3 had his same node before the quote unquote nerfs, uh, Ronin could cheese opponents for days and deal a crap ton of damage, and that is pretty much what's happening here. So, as soon as you get to your first level 1, you have won the fight using Ronin, and you can use like a 5 star rank 3 Ronin. It's gonna take maybe slightly longer, but you're gonna blitz through most of this without much issues. Okay, so uh, in addition to Ronin, you can use Morningstar because Morningstar still gets the extra damage increase uh, on her level 2, even if you don't get to nullify the buffs, still get the added damage. You can use Magic and Magic's level 3s because, uh, again, even though your nullify abilities might fail, you still get the huge, huge, huge damage increase. And then you can still keep using your long shots or whichever Mystic Champions you feel free to using because opponents obviously trigger a lot of buffs. You're going to be feeding Mystic Dispersion and your damage output is going to go through the roof. So this is a totally, totally cheesable lane, which is uh, also very fun. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, I was like running Suicide Mastery when I was clearing it, so I couldn't properly cheese it, but it definitely should be cheesed. <clears throat> right, so bosses. I'm going to start with uh, one of the trickier ones. And the trickier ones, so power buildup, power overflow, they basically do nothing because these guys don't have level 3. But uh, the arrogance is the main thing that you need to worry about. Why did it lock out? So arrogance. Every 10 hits on the attacker's combo meter flick them with a falter passive. Falter causes their attacks to miss and last 3 seconds. When the attacker is struck, falter is removed. Now the most important thing to understand before testing it out is the 10th hit still lands and then you get that falter placed upon you that's important to know because you can play around this with again any champion that can counter this electro looks abilities one of the trickier things however is to counter this electro look and what do you do so obviously again you can quake and ignore all of the nodes basically in this uh, boss fight what else can you do? Namor is a perfectly viable option, which I used for most part because you reflect all the damage back to the boss. So it's very simple there. And other than that, you're ideally looking at champions who are uh, able not to take passive damage with certain types of attacks. Like Omega Red, for instance, can be a fantastic option. Because your tentacle hits will basically nullify the damage back here. In addition to Omega Red, now we have Gambit, whose medium attacks and special attacks don't take any damage back. We have Daredevil Netflix now, who above 15 combo, if he's awakened, I believe. No, wait, just above 15 combo. Doesn't take, any, no, wait, if he's awakened, <laughs> above, he d above 15 combo, he doesn't take any damage back. Uh, what else? We have Falcon, who can lock on. We have Black Widow, who can have reasonable success here. And Crossbones. Crossbones as well, for every Fury buff that he has, he's going to take... Uh, well, he has a chance not to take damage back, and then you have Black Widow. But those are pretty much the best options. It's not really the ideal fight. Uh, basically, look for your Electro counters, and keep in mind this uh, Arrogance mode. Another great option... And there are a couple of great options are champions with projectile basic attacks. Namely, in this case, especially Professor X, because Professor X only has first medium as non-projectile, the rest of them are projectiles. And in addition to that, Professor X can bypass miss, so he can ignore arrogance. So Professor X is a great counter here. Havoc can be an amazing counter here as well. And uh, then the rest of the champions who have their basic hits as projectiles. Right, the next boss. <laughs> and the next boss is this energy adoption, lightning, poison vulnerability, heal reversal, and power builder, power overflow. 
And uh, the best, the easiest way was honestly just to ghost the guy. That, that sorted the problem out because energy adoption lightning gives you damage or time debuffs, ghost converts them into furies and you have great time plus you can nullify the away abilities or yeah that's it. Ghost did phenomenally. Other than that you're looking for lightning immunity or you're looking for champions who can inflict poison because just as we discussed before in the previous lane with incinerate in that case if you bleed the opponent you stop it in this case if you poison the opponent you stop the node and uh, that means that i don't know immortal abomination or abomination with red guardian synergy combined with the poison vulnerability will work phenomenally great here suppose uh dr voodoo would be working quite well as well so you're basically looking for either ghost shock immune champion or a champion that can inflict poison those are kind of like the main best counters, I suppose. And lastly, we have this uh, Mercy, Mighty Charge, Power Builder, Power Overflow, Angela. And Mercy is actually very, very good note that you can kind of play around everyone. So this Punishing Angela, I think it's the mix-up champions called, uh, has no immunity, so Archangel worked fantastic for her as well, and Archangel can work around Mercy node. However, you can definitely uh, use most of the champions against this boss, for sure. In addition to that, thanks to power buildup and power overflow nodes, and the fact that there is no set kind of like damage over time effect associated with it, you can just erone and cheese it as well. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, if you really want to, you can quake it, but there's no real reason to. And... Uh, yeah, Mercy is a very dangerous node, as we saw it on Sabertooth in the first beta. But in this set of circumstances, I think it's actually quite fun and interesting, where you need to dex a bunch of times, then parry the opponent, and then you deal more damage than you normally would. And you can kind of play around everything. Uh, obviously, as this is Angela, uh, and she can get precision buffs. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to take many special attacks in block. So if you bring in champions that ideally can power control, you'll definitely have a much easier time as well. But it's really not the trickiest boss. And that uh, is it for this quest. I will post the final quest breakdown tomorrow. Stay tuned so you don't miss that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, hit that like button. Leave more suggestions for great counters, great options, great interactions in the comment section so people who watch it later after you can benefit from that as well because it's impossible for me to go over everything. But uh, yeah, that is me done here and I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya.